welcome to this uh, next lecture in the previous class we had looked at uh, different things we had looked at uh, residence time distribution e curve for well mixed tanks in series for plug flow with dispersion that is dispersed plug flow model let me take you uh, back to um, different things that we were talking about how do we analyze real life reactors so this is where we are in the course we are on third part of our uh, of our course just to quickly help you to revise what is the expression for e theta and sigma theta square for tanks in series model what is the expression for e theta and sigma theta square for peclet number greater than 100 and what is the expression for peclet number less than 100 so if you write these expressions if you revise it will be automatic revision of the previous lecture and then you will be in a better shape to understand what is going to come in this lecture so this is where we are we can either experimentally measure and solve or we can use computational fluid dynamics and solve concentration and these are difficult things to do we are not going to do that in the course what we are going to follow is this path in the course is we are going to experimentally measure how the reactor or the equipment responds to stimulus we are going to compare with plug flow behavior or compare with well mixed behavior <coughs> so in this category <coughs> so in this category we had seen uh, three things first of all we have seen well mixed tanks in series this is the first thing that we have seen we have seen dispersed plug flow model so small deviations from plug flow or large deviations from plug flow we had fitted this to experimental data to actual rtd data we had fitted this to experimental or actual rtd data now in this lecture we are going to focus on this compartment models okay this is the third thing that we are going to do then later on in the next class we will see how to utilize all of this information so point that i am trying to make is that a given reactor or a given equipment we can do an experiment and measure the residence time distribution measure the eker and now we are trying to comprehend that behavior by fitting either tanks in series model or uh, or a plug flow with dispersion model or this combination of compartment one so once we understand that this is how a real reactor behaves then we can take steps to improve that reactor or then take steps to predict how what will be the conversion and so on so forth okay so this is where we want to uh, what we want to do imagine now we have talked little bit about micro reactors as well do you recall that we had talked about micro reactors when we had started talking about exothermic reactions high surface area per unit volume so if there is a micro reactor we are the flow the dimensions are so are so small that we will get a laminar flow and laminar flow means we will have a velocity distribution a parabolic velocity distribution like this so now if different packets of fluid are at these different locations this packet will go very fast to the end it will spend less amount of time in the reactor this packet may be near the wall moves at a low velocity and it will take a long time before it comes out so this is not like a plug flow situation this is uh, definitely not plug flow behavior okay what i would want you to do is to derive an equation derive an expression for et for a laminar flow in a tube okay this is the uh, derivation so vz we said is 2 v average 1 minus r by r the whole square if we think about this as this let's say this is the tube let's say this is the tube this is the center this is the radial direction okay we can take a small differential element of size dr at a location r so this is at a location r size is dr okay? and capital r is the radius of the tube if you like so we want to find out the flow rate through this differential ele element so flow rate would be dq 
would be the flow rate would be vz multiplied by area perpendicular to vz that's nothing but 2 pi r dr so dq by q if you want to find out it's vz divided by 2 pi r dr v average into pi r square reason we are uh, doing that is this uh, we want to get rid of this uh, average velocity so it becomes dq by q just becomes dependent on how the profile looks like how the profile looks like it's this we will just cancel out okay so dq by q would be 4 by capital r square capital r is the radius of the tube capital r is the radius of the tube okay so it will be 4 by r square 1 minus r by r square into r dr so this distribution dq by q depends only on the profile how the profile is if it is flat profile then we don't have to worry it is just like a plug flow behavior now so the time spent by a fluid element let's say a fluid element let's say we are talking about this fluid element it is at a distance r from the center so this fluid element time that it spends is related to l divided by velocity in the z direction at this radial location which means it is z would be 2v 1 minus r by r the whole square so time spent by this particular fluid element would be tau l by v this is our tau 1 minus r by r the whole square okay now so dt if i do dt by would be differentiate this differentiate this so with respect to r of course dt by d would be tau and r square 1 minus r by r whole square the whole square into r dr so i can represent this okay, from here from here 1 minus r by r whole square so 1 minus r by r whole square is nothing but tau by 2t okay so dt would be tau r square tau by 2t the whole square r dr just little bit simplification nothing but 4t square r square tau r dr and dq by q we had got it earlier dq by q well, well, dq by q was this expression i can simplify this also from here okay, dq by q was this and if i represent from here tau by 2t dq by q would be tau square by 2t cube into dt now if you think about this dq by q that's a fraction that has come out if i integrate this left hand side if i integrate this uh, if i integrate right hand side 0 to infinity left hand side will be 1 1 that means this right hand side this is like the e curve integral 0 to infinity e t dt is 1 okay. so e curve would be tau square by 2t cube and uh, remember how this is tau square by 2t cube is it valid for t equal to 0 obviously t equal to 0 it is not valid why because fluid has not come out so if you say that if we say that this is the residence time this is sorry if we say this is the tube l is the tube parabolic profile which means the center line velocity peak velocity is two times v that means if a fluid element is here it will spend a time tau which is l by v divided by 2 at this time fluid element which is at the center will come out that is the first thing that will come out because that is the highest velocity so the e curve till tau by 2 the value of e curve is just 0 nothing comes out beyond tau by 2 e curve is tau square by 2t cube this is how it will look like if you plot in terms of e theta this e t we can convert in terms of e theta as well e theta would be 1 by 2 theta cube this is how it will look like till tau by 2 which means tau equal to 0.5 theta equal to 0.5 nothing e theta will be 0 beyond that now 
will start with it will be equal to 4 theta is 0 0.5 0 0.5 cube 1 by 8 it will become in the numerator 8 by 2 it will become 4 right so theta is equal, e theta is equal to 4 and then beyond that it is this expression tau square by 2 t cube or 1 by 2 theta cube so e theta is 1 by 2 theta cube this is how E curve will look like for laminar flow. Is it like a plug flow? Plug flow would have been at E theta versus theta for an actual plug flow would have been just one peak here. Just a peak here. So laminar flow does not at all behave like plug flow is not at all plug flow remember when we had talked about in the first lecture on rtd we had said that for a plug flow uh, to be satisfied plug flow a condition to be satisfied we said that peclet number has to be far far greater than 1 l by d has to be far far greater than 1 and flow has to be turbulent that's the reason why we had said. See, laminar flow RTD is not at all like a plug flow. Not at all. Not at all. So when you are designing micro reactors, you have to be careful. You have to consider that flow is laminar and exit edge E theta or E T is not at all like plug flow. You have to consider this while designing micro reactors. Okay. Uh, Here is the next problem. Derive an expression for ET for two well mixed tanks in parallel. Let's say total volume of the reactor is V. This or, or equipment is V. This whole equipment which is as of volume V is going to behave like two well mixed tanks in parallel. One of volume alpha V and another of one minus alpha V. Alpha is the fraction in one. And the total flow rate through the equipment splits into two parts, beta and 1 minus beta f. Overall residence time is V by f. I want you to derive an expression for ET in terms of alpha, beta and tau. Do this for yourself. You can use either step change or you can use pulse change, whichever one you like. Pause the video, do it for yourself. Only when you get an answer, then go forward and you can check your answer. Here is the answer. Hint if you want, if you want some hints, draw a sketch. Right? Use a step input. Okay? Here is a sketch. This overall equipment is having a volume V. Overall flow rate is F. This equipment which has a volume V, which has a flow rate F coming into it, behaves as if it is a two well mixed tanks in parallel. Flow volume is alpha V. Flow rate is beta f, volume is 1 minus alpha v, flow rate is 1 minus beta f. Okay? So whatever step input we do splits into two parts. One goes here, mixes and comes out. One goes here, mixes and comes out. Now you write an expression for C0, C out as a function of time in terms of C1 and C2. Relate that to Ci. And remember the f curve is C out divided by C i. How this C out is going to look like? If you plot C out versus time, it's going to increase and approach the value C i at, at large times. And the dimensionless F, dimensionless concentration C0 by C i C out by C i, that's our F curve. Right. It will go from 0 to 1. And derivative of this F curve is our E curve. Recall this is from our previous lectures. Okay. So, with these hints now, you should be able to solve it for yourself. Don't go forward till you solve. Don't go forward. Pause the video. Make the effort. Make the effort. Unless you make the effort, 
you will not learn okay so here is a expression now okay tau overall tau is v by f tau 1 if i define tau 1 is residence time for this reactor or this well mixed vessel tau 2 is residence time in this well mixed vessel tau 1 is alpha by beta tau tau 2 is 1 minus alpha divided by 1 minus beta into tau now we are giving a step change do this problem here is the answer so c1 would be ci into 1 minus e raised to minus t by tau 1 c2 would be ci into 1 minus e raised to minus t by tau 1 we call for a step change what is the outlet concentration how we had derived in the last class or previous class see that and come back here okay check whether these expressions are you can derive for yourself or with, and whether these are correct so c0 now c outlet concentration is just a weighted average of this c1 and c2 what did average because of what because the flows are different flows are different flow is beta f here flow is 1 minus beta into f here flows are different so it will be a weighted average of these flow rates so c0 would be beta c1 plus 1 minus beta into c2 so f curve would be c0 by ci would be beta c1 in terms of ci 1 minus beta c2 in terms of ci we have divided by ci throughout this will give us our f curve this is our f curve okay. e curve would be derivative of this f curve with respect to time so it will be beta by tau 1 e raised to minus t by tau 1 1 minus beta by tau 2 e raised to minus t by tau 2 so tau 1 can i replace from here tau 1 is alpha by beta into tau alpha by beta so it is beta square by alpha tau e raised to minus t by tau 1 or it will be minus alpha by beta t by tau and same way 1 minus beta the whole square divided by 1 minus alpha e raised to minus t by tau to tau and then we can simplify this is our e curve for two tanks in two well mixed tanks in parallel you see how easy it is if i write in terms of the f curve all I have to do is differentiate. Okay. Okay. Let's go forward. Plot this dimensionless residence time E theta versus theta for one well mixed tank and two well mixed tanks in parallel. And see the sensitivity of parameters alpha and beta. Here is a plot. Here is what I am asking. E theta now would be tau E t. Right. So tau e t would e theta would be beta square by alpha e raised to minus alpha by beta theta plus 1 minus beta the whole square divided by 1 minus alpha e raised to minus 1 minus alpha divided by 1 minus beta into theta. So this e theta if you plot I would like you to see how it changes based on different values of alpha and beta so you can use it in you can do it in excel here's a some sample plot e theta versus theta if you plot this is for one well mixed tank and this is for two well mixed tanks in parallel right see they are different and now you can see how this red curve shifts if we change values of alpha and beta do that for yourself do it in excel or some spreadsheet software but play with these numbers alpha and beta and see how this number how the e theta curve shifts based on values of alpha and beta okay let's go forward well mixed tank with a dead zone and a bypass i will show you an expression i will show you a picture how it looks like i want you to derive an expression for et so again total equipment volume is v well mixed volume is one alpha v dead zone volume is one minus alpha into v total flow rate into equipment is f flow rate through the well mixed part is beta f flow rate through the bypass is one minus beta f. overall residence time is tau v by f I want you to drive an equation for ET in terms of alpha, beta, and tau. Here is the sketch. Right? So this overall dotted thing, this overall is V. This is the overall equipment, the real life equipment. Flow rate is F. And 
we are saying that this equipment behaves like one well mixed tank there is a bypass and then there is a dead zone whatever material goes here it just sticks it this is just not uh, when we say dead zone what it means is that this is not at all participating dead means it is not participating not participating means it is there is no flow coming in there is no flow going out as if this volume is not connected it is not receiving fluid not not receiving flow it is not mixing it is not contributing to reaction or whatever is the process that is happening in this equipment okay use a step input that's why i'm saying step input is easier to understand mathematically but pulse input is easier to do it actual experimentally okay let's go forward pause the video do it for yourself some just some definition tau is the overall v by f tau 1 this is the residence time in that well mixed tank tau 1 would be alpha v divided by beta f or alpha by beta into tau now we can relate the inlet concentration ci so this is ci this is also ci this is c1 this is ci so ci and c1 is mixing and coming out as c2 what i want is how c2 changes with respect to time or how c2 by ci changes with time and c2 by ci is nothing but our f curve and if i differentiate this curve whatever expression we get we will get our e curve that will be the e curve for well mixed tank plus bypass along with the dead zone okay and then i want you to find out how this e curve changes with respect to parameters alpha and beta and we want to do it in terms of dimensionless so how e theta can be represented in terms of alpha and beta pause solve for yourself okay so c1 would be ci into 1 minus e raised to minus t by tau 1 c2 will be c2 will be beta times c1 plus 1 minus beta times ci right and i can divide throughout by ci right this is ci ci okay, let's put let me put a black ink it's not c it is ci because then this will be our f curve okay. and then e curve would be derivative of the f curve Oops, sorry e curve would be derivative of the e curve so df by dt would be e curve so you will find that and you can represent in terms of theta e theta would be beta square by alpha e raised to minus beta by alpha into theta derive this for yourself derivation is here but you derive it for yourself right make sure that you get this expression now see how the e theta versus theta curve looks like for different values of beta and alpha use an excel use that power of spreadsheet see how the param how the parameters change with respect to beta and alpha okay. here is a sample plot do it for yourself this is one well mixed tank let's put that blue color this is one well mixed tank and this is well mixed tank plus dead zone plus bypass see how i want you to see how this red curve changes based on the parameter values beta and alpha so here 5% is bypassing 35% is dead zone 1 minus alpha is dead zone 0.35 is dead zone means 35% 1 minus 
1 minus beta is bypassing, 0.05 is bypassing, 5% is bypassing. To increase bypass, how does this red curve change as compared to the blue curve? Right? See, do it for yourself, put it in Excel, use that power of spreadsheet and see how these parameter, how the parameters alpha and beta affect the distribution. So if we, the point that I'm trying to make is we can now compare different kinds of uh, scenarios, well mixed tank, plug flow, bypass, series, parallel, um, combination of any of these, we try to come out with some combination and try to see which combination fits the observed RTD better. And then we can say that our real Rife reactor behaves as this combination of idealized reactors. That's why this is called, this part is called as compartment models. Okay. We could also have a combination of plug flow followed by a well mixed tank or a well mixed tank followed by plug flow. So for well mixed tank, theta would be 1 by tau well mixed e raised to minus t by tau well mixed and the plug flow causes just a delay, either a delay before or delay after. So overall ET would be, ET would be 0 when tau is less than tau p, tau for the plug flow, so tau plug flow, this will have tau plug flow and this will be tau well mixed, this will be tau well mixed and ET would be 1 by tau wm e raised to minus t minus tp tau p by tau wm. This is valid when t is greater than or equal to tau. So you will quickly realize that whether combination is plug flow followed by well mixed or well mixed followed by plug flow, you will get the same RTD behavior. Okay. Here's the problem. This data we know, right? This is our actual observed concentration at the outlet versus time for a pulsed for a pulse input to a real reactor, an actual reactor. So what actual is not required here. Okay. So this is our this gave us our observed ET actual. We know this tau is 13.91, sigma square is 36.85 and sigma theta square is 0.19. I want you to fit plug flow plus well mix behavior, plug flow plus well mix, this residence time distribution, I want you to fit for this data. What are the parameters? What can we use to fit the data? I can play with tau p, so that means I am going to vary, right? I am going to vary tau p and vary tau wm calculate root mean square error and compare the root mean square error and, and compare the value of root means, uh, compare the values for um, and, and try to minimize the root mean square and compare the values of our root mean square error and see how it fits graphically. Pause and do it for yourself, do it for yourself, don't, don't just go forward. I'm just giving you a, a, the result now. You should be able to do it in Excel. Okay. So RMS is minimized when tau p is 7.55 and tau wm is 11.06. Notice 7.55 plus 11.06. That's not equal to this number. Root mean square is 0 0.0039. Compare this with the previous lecture. in which we fitted well mixed tank in series and plug flow with dispersion. Now we are fitting plug flow, this lecture we are fitting plug flow plus well mixed. Right? This was in the previous lecture. 
this is in this lecture now and see which one of them is better is this better or this better or this better which one is better option 1 or option 2 or option 3 then whichever one fits better then we can say ah our real reactor behaves like either this or this or this this is how it will fit this is how it will look like red is the fitted and the blue symbols are the actual data this fit is better than dispersed plug flow model but it is worse than plug flow with dispersion okay make sure that this you conclude this yourself okay. so what i am saying is whenever there is a real reactor what i am saying is whenever there is a real reactor and we want to know how this real reactor is behaving we will do an rtd study on this real reactor then we will take different models well mixed tanks in series plug flow with dispersion plug flow plus well mixed plug flow plus two well mixed three well mixed four well mixed plug flow well mixed dead zone bypass different combinations we can think of and in different combinations we can always calculate experimental e curve or calculate the e curve for that combination so let me just give you a methodology if you like so the methodology that i want to uh, i want to i want to share or i want to tell you about imagine that there is a real reactor actual reactor equipment we should say could be reactor could be any other equipment this is suppose our actual equipment there is a flow coming in there is a flow going out there is a tank there is another well mixed and there is a agitator something like that i want to predict how this behaves behavior in the sense predict performance okay. equipment okay what we will do is we will do an rtd study rtd experiment on this equipment experiment means what we will take a tracer we will put a pulse of the tracer at t equal to 0 we will monitor the concentration of the tracer at the outlet as a function of time get some measured behavior this we will convert to et and e theta if you like so we have characterized this we have used we have characterized the actual equipment now if i want to predict performance or if i want to improve performance i must know how this behaves right so on the other side what we will do is we will take our different idealized performance or idealized behavior what are the idealized behavior we know we know that plug flow is an idealized behavior we know well mixed is an idealized behavior what else we have seen we have seen well mixed tanks in series we have seen plug flow with dispersion we have seen all this in the previous lecture this lecture what we have seen say laminar flow say dead zone bypass okay these are the different things that we have seen we have we can calculate the e curve for them 
we will say that this actual equipment behaves as some combination or arrangement of idealized behavior. We can come out with different possibilities. Number arrangement number one. Number one. We can say plug flow followed by well mixed. Arrangement number two, we can say well mixed followed by plug flow. Arrangement number three, well mixed tanks in series. Arrangement number four, well mixed tanks in parallel. Arrangement five, dead zones plus bypass dead zone in well mixed tanks bypass like this we can come out with hundreds and thousands of combinations out using these idealized behaviors any combination of all of these, we can make hundreds of combinations. Do you realize that? What we will do is we can calculate the e-curve for all of them. Predict. Each one. Now we can compare. Actual e curve versus e curve for all these combinations. We can do comparison and we can say each one we can try to fit and we can say ah, combination number six gives a good fit, combination number nine gives a good fit, combination number three does not fit, combination number one does not fit. Combination number 11 fits, combination number 27 fits, combination number 66 does not fit. We can make such statements if we compare. That means this actual reactor behaves like either 6 or 9 or 11 or 27 or whatever. So we know how the ideal combination gives the same residence time distribution. So we can say that Ah, approximately this actual reactor behaves like this combination yes this combination yes this combination yes this combination yes but we know that this combination this reactor actual reactor does not behave like this 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 so we can narrow down now that this reactor behave like oh these 10 combinations and then we can analyze whether there is a needed zone, can we improve mixing and improve the performance? That's the advantage of residence time distribution and that's how we should be using residence time distribution. Again, we don't have to try hundreds of combination. The nature of these, nature of these combinations Tell us something qualitatively about how the E curve will look like. Here is some, some simple examples. If we say that there are deviations from plug flow, right? This is like an ideal plug flow. If there is a long tail, that means there is a some material which is sticking inside. There is a stagnant zone in the reactor. If there are circulations like this, which means there are strong internal circulation, there is like a recycle happening inside. There is a some short circuiting that is happening, parallel path channeling is happening. Okay? Or the tracer is stuck inside and therefore it is not coming out. Observed mean observed residence time is more than the calculated from V by F. That can happen if the flow rate measurement is wrong or the tracer is adsorbed inside, something like that. If there are deviations from well mixed behavior, right? This is almost like an exponential well mixed behavior. If there is a dead part in initially, this could be because of the transportation lag, could be pipelines. Are there inlet pipelines along between where we have put in the tracer and the actual entry to the reactor or our detection measurement point and the exit of the reactor? 
that can explain this time lag or there could be circulations inside or there could be uh, initial peak itself is very high so that the observed residence time is less than the actual residence time V by F. This can happen if there is a short circuiting, if the fluid is taking a path quickly outside right, or a late curve, incorrect V or flow rate or inert tracer is not inert or short circuiting. So if you see these kinds of behavior, this or this in the actual RTD, actual RTD here, then you already know that this RTD tells you something about what kind of combination will be good, what kind of combination will not work. Okay? Then you don't have to try out hundreds of combination, maybe 10, 20 combinations you need to try out. Okay? So the RTD curve is telling us something about what is happening inside. That's the importance of RTD. It tells you how the equipment is behaving. Then we can take a corrective action. That's the importance and requirement of uh, that's how it is useful uh, for us. Okay. Just some homework. We have discussed whatever we have discussed is in chapter 14, fourth edition of Cogler's book. If you are referring to fifth edition, it is chapter number 18. In terms of Levenspiel's book, it is third edition, chapter 12 and 15. You can do problem number 12, 12. So, we will stop this lecture here. Think about all the things that we have done. Think about all the things we have done. Why and how compartment models help us. Realize that RTD is a tool. It helps us to identify how the equipment is behaving. And once we know how it is behaving, we can take corrective action. We can improve the performance. We can improve conversion. Fixing, all those things can be improved if I know how it is behaving. That's why we do RTD study on an actual industrial, let's say, reactor or an equipment. We'll stop here uh, this lecture.